Julie, big exciting news for the city of Los Angeles today um, with the announcement of the new NWSL team coming, Angel City, which you are the president of the group that is bringing that team to our city. What can you tell us uh, about what went into the steps in order to bring the team to LA? Yeah, uh, we've been working on this nonstop since August of 2019, and we've approached the building of this club really differently. Instead of going to the league with the money and the stadium or the ability to build a stadium, we went to the league with a team and a mission and idea with the idea that we are going to hit strategic milestones. And as we do that, we'll grow the valuation of the club and also raise money along the way. So it was a really different building process, one that's never been done before where there was no playbook. So we like to say that we are reshaping expectations of how an organization can get built. And then we bring that even forward to how we think about ticketing and sponsorships and fan engagement and com community involvement. Um, I have to ask about the, the ownership group, quite a, a star studded assembled group here, not to mention also a two year old, which I want to ask about. <laughs> how did you get together this particular group of mostly women? Yes, I, it's been an unbelievable journey. So the idea really started with Natalie Portman. She uh, is involved with Time's Up and was supportive of them as they uh, fought for pay equity. Kara Nortman, who's also one of the three original founders with myself, um, is on the board of Time's Up and got to know Natalie and the U.S. Women's National Team players, as well as their um, the union rep for the U.S. Women's National Team by the name of Rebecca Rue, and really learned about the league and the players and the sport and how undervalued it was and what it would take to build a team um, following this crazy success of the women in the World Cup in 2019, there was so much enthusiasm and excitement that Natalie said, let's let's bring a team to LA, let's make it happen. Um, I'm an entrepreneur, I know how to build brands and build community and Natalie and Kara reached out to me during one of our women in tech basketball games and asked if I'd like to do some legwork and figure out if this was possible. And we realized very quickly that we could build this like you build a startup. And so when you go to build a startup, you wanna find people that are passionate about the mission and believe in your ultimate goals like we do. Our purpose is to ignite higher expectations on and off the field. And so we look at this as bringing sports together with entertainment, uh, local community involvement with global entertainment and also mission and capital. So as we went to find investors, we found Like Minds and Eva Longoria and Jennifer Garner, Uzo Dubo, and also Alexis Ohanian, who also believed that this sport was undervalued. There was incredible growth opportunity for professional women's soccer in the US and an ability to level the playing field as we build for the future. And of course, Alexis gave an opportunity for his daughter to be one of the youngest owners in sports history at just two years old. So that's pretty cool too. It was an incredible conversation the first time we talked with him. We knew right away that he would be our partner. Um, he shared this incredible story where he was watching the finals with his wife and Olympia and Olympia was kicking the soccer ball around and he made a comment to Serena that said, maybe she'll be a professional women's soccer player one day and be playing in the World Cup. And the story goes that Serena said somewhat flippantly, uh, no, she won't, they don't get paid. And he looked at her and said, challenge accepted. I have 16 years to make sure that women make as much as men. And he's the kind of guy when he says something like that, he joins the fight and he wants to make a difference. And so that's exactly what we want to do for women as well. So they can play professional soccer and have to do nothing else to support their income. Well, the time seems to be now with all the changes. That's a great story, by the way. Um, the changes that are being made and all the attention that has been put uh, not just on women's sport, but particularly women's soccer. This is a city, Los Angeles is a city with a, a rich history in, in athletics and sports. So what is it that Angel City is going to bring to this community? Well, Los Angeles, as you know, is a incredibly passionate sports community. We have nine professional sports teams, USC and UCLA, and we have the ability to open up our hearts and become fans of a number of different teams and watch these athletes become legends. As it relates to soccer, there is no question that there is a deep community and fan base from soccer. When you look at the sellout crowds at LAFC and the LA Galaxy, when the US Women's National Team comes and plays, they sell out the stadiums as well. And also, we already know that there is a strong community for bringing an NWSL team to Los Angeles, led by Mark and Lindsay Rojas, who at every single LAFC game in the middle of the 3252 wave their flag, which says bring, some, bring a team to 
to Los Angeles. So we know we have the community and the fan base. We know that we're gonna have the expertise and the help from this incredible founding ownership group to bring in, bring in incredible talent um, on the field and off with investors such as Mia Hamm and Julie Foudy, Abby Walmack, and about a 12 former US Women's National Team players that live here in Southern California, including the coach of UCLA. Um, so really excited to start building the soccer operations side next year and build a team that the city can be super proud of and come support. So the, the plan now is is for the team to, um, you know, step foot on the pitch in spring 2022. What would be maybe the five-year trajectory uh, for Angel City? That's a great question. I mean, our number one goal is to sell out. We want to see these stadiums packed with fans. We know that we can get 20,000 plus fans. Once we do that, then it's a, a conversation with our friends at the Rams and the Chargers to see if we can uh, squeeze our way into that stadium. Ah, make it even bigger, greater yes. capacity. Um, what is it, you know, how would you utilize this community here that is such a tremendous um, sports fan base? And what is your hope for the relationship with the community? Yeah, we plan to work with the community in two ways. One um, is by definition, helping us figure out our brand and our name. We affectionately call ourselves Angel City to represent the city of angels, but we want to work with our community and the supporters community to finalize our brand work, naming, kit, colors, crest, so that we all feel like we birthed it together. And then secondarily, I talked about it earlier, but we believe in mission and showing up in our community. We believe in using sports as a way to address social injustice. And to do that, we've partnered with the LA 84 Foundation to look at our local community and see how we can show up for our youth, both girls and boys. Well, you guys have a, a lot of cooks in the kitchen, so to speak, with that star-studded ownership group. When it comes down to crest and colors and all that stuff, who's making the decisions here? Does everybody weigh in or is there one or two key voices? It'll definitely be a team decision, but I'm going to whittle the choices down so that we can be really focused when we make a decision. And what have what has the initial response been uh, to this announcement? It's, it's been incredible. It's been incredibly overwhelming. We knew we wanted to see the best athletes in the world play the global sport in the best city in the world, which is Los Angeles. And we knew we had support from the NWSLA supporters group and this incredible network of founding owners. But the love and the support and the excitement that we've seen online for women's soccer, the NWSL and Los Angeles in general has, has absolutely blown us away.